All right, well, it's finally here. A uh, long time coming. Uh, excited to get the season going. Uh, excited to find out what type of team we have, where we're at as a football team, get a good idea of, of uh, you know, where we stand. Uh, Utah State, uh, you know, a little bit about them. There's a lot of unknowns, as there is in uh, every opener. But, uh, you know, we do know a few things. Ten returning starters, brand new coaching staff. A lot of excitement coming out of Logan, uh, you know, with the, with the turnover. And so, um, you know, it's a, a game that uh, will be put on hold for a couple of years. So this is, you know, this is the last time we'll play them up in, uh, until, what, 2012. Um, you know, really feel good about our fall camp, our efforts to this point. Uh, work ethic, uh, focus, concentration has all been very good. But uh, you never really know where you stand until you line up against somebody. And so this will be an opportunity to do that. We're, you know, we've be been beating on each other since way back in spring ball. And we're ready to, to uh, line up against uh, an opponent other than ourselves. So excited in that respect. Uh, new coaching staff for us, you know, as far as the changes, uh, seems to have gone very well. You know, very, a lot of continuity, a lot of cohesiveness, cohesiveness among our staff. Um, you know, the players right now, uh, health-wise, we're in good shape. You still have a few guys that are questionable, but came out of camp, you know, relatively healthy. I mean, we did not lose anybody, you know, for the entire season, which which is a positive. That's what you want to try to accomplish in camp, and, and fortunately, we were able to come out of camp in that situation. So, anyways, excited to get going. Uh, 7 p.m. kick, full house. Uh, the Muss, 5,000 strong. It's the it's a record-setting Muss. Uh, Population this year in the stadium, and which is great. You know, they're, uh, you know, the at the enthusiasm and the uh, the passion, and excitement they bring to our stadium is is uh, tremendous. So, just uh, looking forward to watching these guys play uh, in a few days. Yeah, our own unknowns. Uh, first of all, you know, quarterback. Obviously, whichever guy is in there is not has never taken a Division One snap, and so that's uh, that's a uh, a situation where a quarterback. Particularly, you never really know what you got, so you put them under fire in a game situation, and so that's that's something that uh, uh, we'll be uh, finding out on Thursday night. We have a new punter, uh, Sean Selwood, a new snapper in Patrick Green, a new holder, who Sean Selwood is also the holder, uh, Ben Vroman, who has never place kicked in a football game, Luke Matthews, who's never returned a punt in a football game, and so a lot of you know special teams wise, a lot of new things going on there. Uh, Corners, you know, we have two new corners with that. Uh, you know, we lost Sean and Bryce, outstanding players, and those those big big shoes to fill with Brandon Burton and uh, R.J. Stanford in that in that role. But uh, you know, that's probably about it. You know, we have uh, a lot of known commodities. You know, uh, Matt Asiata, our receiving core, even though they weren't starters last year, uh, you know, they're very we feel very good about that group. Offensive line still not completely solidified. Walter Watts is probable, and if Walter's healthy. And Caleb is not ready to go. Then it's Walter and Tavita at guards, Zane Taylor at center, and that's what we're hoping for. You know, if we have to, you know, if we have a setback between now and and the game, then we'll have to shuffle the deck. But that's what we're counting on right now. That if Caleb is available, uh, right now he's questionable. That would put Caleb at left guard and Walter and Tavita rotating at right guard. So that's kind of where we're at health-wise. Koamisi is still a question mark, and that will most likely be a game time decision. But other than that, uh, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at. I would, you know, I got a brand new quarterback that I'm facing as a defense coordinator. Test him out, see how he handles the pressure. I think that's something that uh, most all coordinators in the country would do. And uh, you know, we got to be able to handle that. Now we've thrown a lot at him in practice. You know, we've been uh, pressuring the quarterbacks, you know, quite a bit in practice and putting him in those situations. But, but again, when you can't, you know, nothing's live. You can't touch the quarterback. I mean, it's a little bit different situation. That's a good question. We'll both play. Um, you know, with two guys being inexperienced, uh, you never know when you're going to need to go to the other guy. And so I think if there's opportunity, yes. You know, if there's opportunity, we're not going to say, yeah, definitely at this point in the game, this guy will play. You know, we're not going to to uh, go to paint ourselves into a corner that way. But but if we have the opportunity, and that'll be really all season long. You know, if we have any opportunity, we have to, to get both of them developed. And that's, you know that's uh, really dependent about upon how the game plays out and what what situations occur and what opportunities we have. Well, typically in the in the opener, you don't have your full playbook, uh, you know, available. You know, regardless of who's a quarterback, but you know, in this case, um, you know, they've had a lot of a lot of offense thrown at them. We have. Uh, I'm not going to call it a dummy down uh, play game plan because that's not the case, but it will certainly be something that we add to 
each and every week as we go throughout the season. But I, you know, they have a, a pretty voluminous uh, playbook to, to work with this week. Well, defensively, we assume that they're going to hang on to a lot of what we did here. You know, you know, he was our defense coordinator for four years, did a fantastic job, and you know, he was sold on what we're doing, and, and uh, obviously believes in in the uh, the scheme that we employ here. And so that's something that we feel is a uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of similarities there. Uh, offensively, a little bit different animal. Uh, you know, you got Coach Baldwin who came from New Mexico, so we've been studying the Mexico tapes. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, you get bits, bits and pieces of what you hear, you know, through the through the media and so forth. It sounds very similar to us. No huddle, uh, spread formations, and so uh, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of similarity in that respect too. Well, they certainly know more about our program than we know about theirs from a personnel standpoint. You know, he knows our personnel inside and out, and uh, you know, we know of their personnel through playing in the last few years. But, but uh, you know, if there is an advantage. Uh, that would be the only one because they don't know, you know, scheme-wise. Every every year you have new wrinkles, new things you add, new things you take, or things you take away from what you've been doing. And so, I, you know, there's no way. Uh, I think there's an advantage either way, scheme-wise, but personnel-wise, you know, him knowing our guys uh, much more so than I know their guys, or we know their guys. I should say, I think maybe a small advantage. Well, you know, Kalani. I'm a defensive guy at heart. I mean, that's kind of what I, I always gravitate to is the defensive side of the ball. And so I've, you know, and one thing that needs to be made clear, you know, the defense here is what it is. It's been what it is for years and years. It's not like when a coordinator comes in, hey, what are you going to do? How, you know, how you, you know, we, this is what we're doing. You know, this is our, this is our deal. It's worked well. And, uh, and I don't want to say that uh, the, def the defense coordinator doesn't have any input because he does his own personality. Uh, is put into the scheme and into the, the way he handles the players, but um, you know we don't uh, you know we don't change much from year to year on defense as far as our basic structure and basic philosophies. Does that answer your question? I don't know. Somewhat. Okay. Not uh, ultimately, you know, as far as winning the Mountain West Conference Championship, and I've said that many times. I you know I don't believe that that uh, where our program's at right now that that should ever be uh, something that we stand up here and say at the beginning of the year, well, we have no chance this year to win a championship. You know, I think if you recruit correctly, which we feel we've recruited very well over the last five years, you should always have a chance. Now, that's not to say there's going to be some some give and take. You know, I don't. You know, obviously we like to be 13 and 0 every year, as would everyone in the country. But, but uh, you know, I, we just feel there should not be any dramatic peaks and valleys. You know, there's no big drop off if if we recruited correctly and if if you stay healthy. I mean, there's a lot of things beyond your control sometimes that creep in, but. But, uh, you know, I, I feel uh, more similar probably to them, you know, in 05 than last year as far as going into the season because there is a lot, of, a lot of those same unknowns this year that were present in 05, whereas last year we had more uh, proven commodities.